you know that every word you speak matters? Are your conversations making a difference? With a passion for words and a heart for conversation, Teresa Velarde is a self-professed word nerd, best-selling author, BizCat 360 columnist, and publisher. Children's books as well as fiction and nonfiction books are welcomed at Weeby Books Publishing and Book Endeavors, the imprints of her company, Authentic Endeavors Publishing. Whether written or spoken, Teresa strives to encourage and inspire meaningful conversations that make a difference. Here's the host of Conversations That Make a Difference, Teresa Velarde. Hey everyone, and welcome to Conversations That Make a Difference. I'm Teresa Velarde, your host, and I'm here with Dr. Kate Cavell. Before we get started, we have some housekeeping to do. I just want to let you know that Conversations That Make a Difference airs every Tuesday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. with live call-in shows um, every first and third Tuesday of the month um, at 5 p.m. Eastern. And you can listen on Syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, online, on your mobile app, in the car, on YouTube, and you can even ask Alexa to play Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. For those of you who have been with me for a while, you know I like to start with a prayer. So we usually say the serenity prayer. So let's do that now. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I want to say it is by God's grace that we are fabulous, blessed, and highly favored living in our greatness, using our gifts and talents, making a difference in the lives of others with passion and purpose, and all of God's great universe is conspiring in our favor. And together we gratefully say, amen. 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 Let me introduce you to this incredible woman who's here with me today. Her name is Dr. Kate Cavell. Such a Cavell. Huh? Cavell. Kevel. Kevel, yeah. I've been saying it wrong all this time, Dr. Kate Kevel. Okay. She's uh, a doctor of chiropractic and she's the founder and owner of Holistic Healthcare, a practice in Spartansburg, South Carolina. She's retired now, but she's still doing wonderful things in the world. We'll get to that. And with over 30 years of experience, Dr. Kate integrates multiple healing modalities to promote optimal health for her patients, emphasizing the importance of nutritional supplements in overall well-being. A daughter of an Irish immigrant, uh, Kate was born and raised in Bellevue, Ohio. Yeah. Before pursuing her career, she's proudly served in the U.S. Army as military intelligence office officer. And Dr. Kate earned her bachelor's degree in education from Ohio State and her doctorate of chiropractic from Sherman College. And throughout her distinguished career, Dr. Kate has touched the lives of patients from the U.S. and across the globe, empowering them to restore balance and improve their health. She's conducted seminars for over 20 years, has over 10,000 hours of coursework in holistic health, homeopathy, um, advanced chiropractic care, neurofeedback, my goodness, this list is as long as my arm, and more. And she remains a dedicated advocate for holistic wellness. Her passion for helping others extends also beyond healthcare. She has owned and operated four vegetarian restaurants, sharing her knowledge about the power of food as medicine. And additionally, she, she supports global initiatives like organic farming, orphan care and clean water projects in Uganda and other countries in need. Driven by her desire to make a greater impact, if she could ever make a greater impact than what she's already <laughs> done now, <laughs> Dr. Kate has launched a handheld tool to raise the magnetic field of the human body, plants, and animals. And this tool is called the shift device. Dr. Kate, welcome to Conversations That Make a Difference. Hi, thank you so much. Now you're so welcome. So um, I am interested to talk about first the shift device, which I have one right here. Very simple okay. little tool, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, tell me about this. So um, first of all, I want to say I was not an officer in military intelligence, but I was in the United States Army under military intelligence. I just was not an officer. Okay. Um, got it. Just to make that clear. Um, so the shift device. Um, I've been, of course, involved in holistic health care, gosh, since probably early 1979 and 80. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I owned health food restaurants, vegetarian restaurants, juice bar way before it was even a thing. And my my passion has always been how to stay healthy and how to help others become healthy. Um, and so in my career, probably the past 10 years, I started noticing seeing patients that what miracles could happen in a week or two, now it started taking a month. And then five years ago, uh, pre-COVID, I noticed people were getting sicker. I had more sick children. I've never I've never had seen as many sick children in, in 35 years as I did the past five years. Mm. And um, of course, pre-COVID, during COVID, and then post-COVID, and then post-COVID vaccine, um, it was so incredibly bad that I, I decided it's it's time that I retire. I, I, just, I was tired mm-hmm. and I was completely perplexed at what to do next for people. I couldn't find answers anymore. Mm-hmm. So I kind of put my feet up for a couple months and uh, thought that was it. You know, I go relax and have fun. And I started reading about the magnetic field of the human body and 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 how much it had decreased mm-hmm. and uh, the, the various things that caused that. And one of those things that I discovered was, um, you know, 5G, cell phones, computers, um, you know, 97% of people in the world own a cell phone. It's true. Yeah. Uh, two billion computers, five million cell to- towers are out there, 1.9 billion 5G connections. And all of those signals that are put, are putting out, they actually are, um, they, they, they hurt our, our body. They bring our magnetic field really low. And so that was, that was kind of disturbing. So I started studying Nikola Tesla and um, just doing tons of research and discovered that Nikola Tesla uh, was very sick back in the 1800s with cholera. And he decided to create something to to, to raise his magnetic field. And he mm-hmm. called it the violet wand. Wow. And uh, and it, it, it did help him. Um, later, uh, someone else patented it. And in the early 1900s, they were using it with great results, great health results. And then they were shut down. So I um, kind of consulted some friends of mine that, that knew what I could do to, to, to create that. And so this was the first one that was made. Wow. And so basically, um, we have to have... A, a high voltage created by a, a battery that we send through a transformer and then that sends the we have a we have a, a, a power module that switches dc current to ac current and then the ac current runs around this copper wire and it puts out this field wow so in the beginning i really didn't know if it was going to work or not i mean it, you know and so and this was only 50,000 volt uh, electromagnetic field so I think it I think it like on a Monday morning, just after after getting the finished product, after getting it all together, uh, a dear, dear friend of mine and patient, she was 86 years old, she'd spent two months in the hospital or two weeks in the hospital with double pneumonia. Her oxygen count was at 50. And uh, the hospital said, look, um, you're gonna have to go home. We'll send you home with oxygen. Uh, you'll be dead by Friday, so call hospital. Oh, my Lord. So she called me on her way home from the hospital, kind of carried her in my house, and in less than 30 minutes, her oxygen count went up to 100, and she was dancing, and she didn't need oxygen. Wow. And so I thought, "Uh uh-oh, I've got something here. Amen. (laughs) Amen. So I um, to, uh, uh, that that I, I want to continue that that portion of the conversation, but just for people who are listening in who may not know mm-hmm. what exactly our electromagnetic field is and what it does for our body or to our body. 
So a uh, great question. And it's known as like the biofuel, the bioelectric field. There's a lot of names for it. Aura, um, you know, chakras in, 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 in the holistic world. So we all of us put off an electrical charge. Everything on the planet does actually. Yes. And the higher our our electrical charge, our biofield, the higher that charge, the healthier we are. All right. Mm -hmm. The lower it is, the sicker we are. So I kind of give you an example, and I'm not going to go into all the math. I could do that, but I mean, it's going to be time consuming, but I'm kind of give you an example, just talking about Hertz. Now, my device is a lot more involved than Hertz, but I'm going to just use it as a reference. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's say we have 97% of the people have cell phones. Yes. And we have uh, 5 million cell towers and we have 1.9 billion 5G connections. All of those put off eight to 10 Hertz. Zero Hertz is death. Oh, wow. So 24 seven, we are receiving low, low, low uh, 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 electrical charges. Mm -hmm. And these things are, they're long and they're, and they're, and they're, they're not even a wave, like the human body and, and nature and everything in life does really well with a with a wave mm -hmm. of a frequency and these mm -hmm. frequencies are linear and they're and they're very powerful and they penetrate and uh and you know we're talking about billions 24 7 a day like i don't know that there's anyone that's not getting hit with those mm. and so and so to raise the electromagnetic field up so we, i mean eight to ten hertz is pretty darn close to zero yeah. And that's death, disease, and sickness. So we mm -hmm. would be way up. So so this, this helped raise a uh, 50,000 volt electromagnetic field. And then after studying blood and, 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 and testing over 400 people, um, I, I went up to, this was um, 150,000 volts. Mm -hmm. and, and now, now this is above one hundred fifty thousand. We're only be where between forty five and fifty millitesla units. Mm -hmm. um, what, what should is, the, what should the body's electromagnetic current be? What should it be? Definitely above one hundred fifty thousand. Okay, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you're up there. If you if you think about the Christ. Is I, 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 I've spent months studying the Christ and studying the Bible and looking at pictures. And, and you see with our holy ones, they always have a halo. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's an electromagnetic field. Touch mm -hmm. my cloak, you shall be healed. I believe our electromagnetic field has been compromised for centuries, not decades, centuries. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, electricity came in and we've cut down trees and we have, and we have concrete roads and we have we live in houses and and all of it is very beneficial to us of course but how many people walk in the woods anymore and they're cutting down the woods you know we're, we're losing so many things and so and then we throw in uh a pandemic and we throw in 5g towers and then we're going up to 6g towers and, and we our electromagnetic field is it's is, it's decreasing at an yeah. incredible rate did that answer your question? Yeah, it does answer my question because I don't think anybody realizes this. You know, technology is this wave of technology has taken us into a whole other dimension. And as yes. you're saying this, I'm thinking about the number of hours I spend with my work in front of the computer and yes. how much I need really to increase my electromagnetic field for safety's sake, if nothing else. Yes. Absolutely. It's, I think. It is one of the most important things every human being needs. Yeah. And I've tested hundreds of people and I have hundreds of devices out there. And, and the response I've, I'm getting, some days I, I want to just pray, just get on my knees and pray and say, thank you so much. Because, yeah. because uh, and, and, and AI isn't going to go anywhere. I mean, right now. Uh, this in, in in my research, what I discovered was that um, 
and, and this is becoming more and more out in the open now. It's becoming more public. When I, when I looked this up two years ago, they said, no, nanotechnology does not exist on Google. Does not exist. But then when I scrolled down, there were six multi-billion dollar companies throughout the world that are creating nanotechnology. Now, if these six companies are six, six billion dollar or six companies, multi-billion dollar industries making nanotechnology, are they just putting them on the shelf and not using them? Well, no. Mm -mm. So more research. What I discovered was um, there, I, I want to really believe, here we go back to, to, uh, I don't know, Bob's listening, but uh, a little bit of cognitive dissonance here. I want to believe they use they their their nanoparticles that they spray in the air to track weather. So God forbid a hurricane is coming your way, you're going to know about it. Uh -huh. They use it on food to track waste. If I am a grocery store and I ordered three cases of avocados and I only sold one, that is money lost. Uh -huh. So. The all of this this nanoparticles they are tracking mechanisms. They use them on clothing um, to track sales. A year ago, August, they started putting them in wine and beer because it's they're allowed they're able to track the fermentation cycle. So it's they're saving millions by knowing when the wine bottle of wine is ready or when the beer is fermented. Uh -huh. so one of those nanoparticles that are being put into these products. Mm -hmm. to monitor its um its life if you will what right. is that doing to us as we consume these products well very similar to our cell phones our 5g towers they as well and remember now i'm just talking hertz i i could go deeper but right now eight to ten hertz so not only are we getting signals from other people's cell phones from our computers but now we have them inside in our body that are picking up on signals as well. So they create a lot of inflammation uh -huh. and and disease and a lot of other weird things. Yeah. Yeah. So what what why I raise the, the voltage on, on the shift is because um uh, first of all, the shift does disable the nanotechnology. Um, and what I discovered about a year ago was that now they created self-replicating nanotechnology. So they actually make babies. And then another thing is they make them, if they're disabled, to turn back on again. And so originally I thought, well, I can make this for practitioners and they can use in their office on the patients. And then once it dawned on me that our, um, that we're, that it's, we're getting them in our food, our water. I mean, it, it's in the water. I've tested filtered water and I've tested tap water with the megaphone. They're there. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to send this out to humanity and, and just create some independence so you can do it at home. So let's do it at home. Let's raise our electromagnetic field at home. Mm -hmm. Stable this stuff at home so you don't have to go off to a practitioner and pay. Yeah. Plus you, you have to do it. I think three to four times a day is is the absolute minimum mm -hmm. because, of our, because of our exposure yeah yeah and it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt it's nothing it doesn't it makes a little noise and it doesn't hurt anything it's just you wave it around your body according to the directions and um i have been using it for a little while now not as much as i really would like to um but i do notice a difference i do notice that i'm not necessarily as tired i my energy level has changed a bit you know mm -hmm. i can um I, I just can, I feel, I feel different. And sometimes it's not even, it's not even a different that I can put into words, except for the fact that my energy level has changed for sure. Yeah. Start using it more consistently and more. I uh, have suffered for years with depression, but I have such a, a um, strong will that I just push myself through it. And, and of course, helping others, then you take the focus off your own so mm -hmm. but um after having this original one i would say within a month uh, within a month i would go to bed at night and i would think i can't wait to get up in the morning i can't wait to go to i can't wait to go to sleep because i can't wait to get up in the morning i don't recall ever ever saying that 
Wow. It, this joy started coming in and I'm like, wow. And my energy increased and I'm like, gosh, this is amazing. And now I'm hearing that from others. That's so, so awesome. Yeah. But just think about, you know, the higher the field and then think about zero is death. Eight to 10 is pretty darn close to death. And we want to, we want to rise above that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, with all the things that are, um, are going on in the world, you know, we talked about, um, in the beginning of the conversation, we talked about, um, during COVID like, and, and the, the vaccines and they have nanotechnology in them. They've admitted they have MRNA technology in them, you know, yeah. so you, you start looking at, um, the, uh, results of what's happened to people who have made the decision to, to, to take that vaccine or whatever. Right. Um, and that's a whole other conversation. That's a side note. That's definitely yeah. a side note. But what I'm saying is that it's in our faces, it's in our bodies, yes. it's everywhere. And the nanotechnology is everywhere. I heard something about Coke and Pepsi having nanobots in their, in their, oh, yeah. In their yeah. I mean, I, I, I use a megaphone because it actually magnifies the sound that they put out that we can't hear with our ears. I mean, I'm, I'm using my megaphone and testing all kinds of food in my house. You know, yeah. organic banana has nanobots. I'm like, what? How can that be? But I just take the organic banana and then I take the shift and I turn them off. Yeah. So you can use it on food. I have people using it on plants. I have a woman who has a horse farm. She had a mare that was ready to be put down and she uses it on her mare and her mare is, is frolicking out in the corral now that's so uh, awesome that's I have awesome. a friend that who her dog hurt his leg and she used it on her dog and he's up and running and, and he was down for like two months with this hurt leg wow that's so awesome and then, yeah and i have another woman she thought you know what since i feel so good and i'm going to start using it on my plants i'll let you know i said yeah do it and then she sent me before and after pictures and i'm like no way but when you think about it it's everything it's this beautiful earth that god has created for us and and, and we're taking it down so yeah so now what i've noticed too with the people that have the shift first of all kids aren't sick anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing i'm noticing is um people are all of a sudden waking up and going you know i was going to cut down this big oak tree but i don't think i'm going to cut it down now like their awareness is starting to heighten yeah about mm -hmm. their surroundings we have been so tired Mm -hmm. as as i think in, in the world but especially in the united states what we're yeah. up against, we've been exhausted just to get up and go to work to, mm -hmm. let alone to think about oh gosh is the food poisoned is our what are we poisoning the water mm -hmm. uh, trees are we taking down is that a bad thing we you know we don't we i think we're we're extremely tired as united states citizens 70 Four percent of United States citizens have chronic disease. Seventy-four percent. Wow, that's crazy. Hold that thought for a minute because we have okay. to go to a break. We have to go to a break. Okay. We, we're going right. to be back in just a few minutes with Dr. Kate Kevill, and I just want to say thank you for bringing this information to my audience because I believe you are opening up a conversation that most people have no idea exists. We'll be. Right are back. you one of the many people who said someday I'll write a book? but don't know how to get started? Many wannabe authors have begun with the same question and are now published by Authentic Endeavors Publishing, a multi-imprint hybrid publishing company. Whether you're writing an autobiography, a memoir, a kingdom book, a children's book, a business book, or an anthology, we have a place for you. Visit www.authenticendeavorspublishing.com for more information or to set up a 20-minute consultation. Your title of published author is within reach. Born Able exists to highlight and normalize the humanity, worth, and abilities of infants and children born with complex medical conditions. We write, illustrate, and publish books for these children and have featured over 1,000 children throughout the world. Our videos and posts have been viewed over 100 million times on social media as we strive to showcase these amazingly abled kids and fight relentlessly for equal medical care, regardless of diagnosis. All 
proceeds from Born Able Books go directly to the Born Able Foundation. To nominate a special kid to be featured in a Born Able book, go to www.bornable.org to learn more. Did you know that every word you speak matters? What you say and how you say it can make or break a relationship or shift the outcome of any situation. Are your conversations making a difference? Faith in God, gratitude, authenticity, and giving are Teresa Velarde's heart. It's in this spirit that she's focused on making a difference in the lives she's blessed to touch. Conversations That Make a Difference is now on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network every Tuesday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Time with live call-in shows every first and third Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. And we're back with Dr. Kay Kevill, and we're talking about the shift. <laughs> this great device that she has uh, come up with using some incredible technology um, to help to boost our electromagnetic field that that technology and life in general ha- is um, helping to reduce. Um, you know, earlier you said something about auras. Our electromagnetic field creates our aura and whatnot. And there, there are some people who can see auras and some people who can't see them. And mm-hmm. I don't know whether that's a gift that they've gotten. Uh, we all have our own gifts and talents. You are, you are ultra gifted, my friend. Um, <laughs> ultra <okay>. gifted. <laughs> um, but I want to ask in relation to now you live in, in uh, South Carolina and you live in an area that was affected by this hurricane, Helene. Yes, and we, before we went to break, we were talking about the fact that one of your friends or somebody, you know, was using the shift on plant life. Yes. So my question to you is have, um, has, how does an event like what you just experienced um, yes. with Helene affect mm-hmm. The, um, the electromagnetic field of the earth, the electromagnetic field of the people who are suffering because of this. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about what life in general does to us as individuals and how it affects our electromagnetic fields and our health. Okay, so we have two nervous systems, sympathetic, which is fight or flight, and parasympathetic, which is the body takes care of itself, the body heals itself. When we are in a state of, te- of sympathetic fight or flight, every organ and gland shuts down and the heart and the muscles become on overdrive so that we can run from that tiger that's going to eat us. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So what happens during crises like these is that our sympathetic nervous system goes into fight or flight. This is very stressful. On mm-hmm. top of being in an election year, Hello. On top of on top of five G, on top of signals, on top of everything else. So, so it's a great question. I actually um, used to when I practice and still do somewhat test people uh, muscle tests. I use muscle testing, and I mm-hmm. test to see where their energy is and also where their sympathetic nervous system is. Mm-hmm. We want our sympathetic nervous system to be at zero. We only want it to turn on when we need it. Yeah. And that would be if your life is threatened, Mm -hmm. tiger is going to eat you. Mm -hmm. I believe that people's sympathetic nervous systems are off the chart. You see, we're a divided country. We're angry at each other. There's road rage. I mean, there's, and there's sickness and disease. 74% of Americans have chronic disease. So you can't, you cannot be healthy if your sympathetic nervous system is firing and your parasympathetic nervous system is not working. It's impossible. And I believe that's where we are. So these hurricanes and everything else doesn't help the matter. The shift actually, by raising the electromagnetic field of the human body, it brings the sympathetic nervous system down to zero. So we're able to sleep, the body can heal itself. When sympathetic nervous system comes down to zero, 
the parasympathetic nervous system, then the body, how it is so godly, divinely created will heal itself. Talk about the talk about this the the sleep factor there. A lot of people are like, oh, I can do that. They just keep adding things and adding things, adding things and adding things on. And I'm guilty of this myself. You know, when I have a deadline to meet because of the work that I do, I can I can I can burn the candle at both ends, so to speak. Sure. But, and then I wonder why I'm not sleeping. I can't turn it off. Right. That's cortisol. It's high cortisol. So you're in a very high state of sympathetic fight or flight. Yeah, absolutely. So, which is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, um, but people don't think yeah. that they think that they need to use every minute of every day to be functioning somehow or be, um, productive somehow, because the messages that are coming in from without are telling us that we need to do better. We need to be more, we need to have more, we need to blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. And it's all, um, for lack of a better phrase, BS. Well, we're ingrained in that. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times in my career I would have patients come in. I was just in a car accident. Oh, when was that? A week ago. And maybe very badly injured. Yeah. I mean, I just had to get back to work right after the accident. Oh, wow. Or, you know, women have babies and they're expected to go back to work in two weeks. And then dad doesn't have to get to do skin to skin time with baby because dad's got to go out and work. And then, you know, it's just our culture. It's, it's what we've become. And hopefully we'll, we'll start uh, doing things differently. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope so too, because you know, that BS also stands for belief systems. Yeah. <laughs> yes. As far as I'm concerned, I use that all the time. Our belief systems keep us trapped in whatever it is that is causing us to have 74% with chronic disease, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, cancer's tripled. Suicide's tripled. Why are all these things happening? It's because people are tired, they're burned out, and their sympathetic fight or flight is going so high. And then what happens when, when your sympathetic nervous system is firing high? those type of people are drawn to you. Um, your whole world turns into that to, to where then you have to get things done. And no, I can't take a week off. I've got to keep working. It's because you're in that fight or flight state. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. fight parasympathetic joy, uh, relaxation time, right? You're, right. So it's, it's a catch 22 kind of. Yeah. So exactly. that's what we want to work on you know, is, is bringing that sympathetic nervous system down. Um, and, and, uh, yeah. What Maybe. other things can people do before? Because of course this is new, this is new technology. Yeah. And so, um, a lot of people don't have this. So sure. before you have, before they get their own shift, sure. how can people, um, what things can people do? What are a couple of things you can tell people to do to help them to bring that fight or flight down and be able to um, live a little bit more peacefully? What kind of things do you suggest? Gosh, breathing is always good. Um, I tell my patients, you know, stop and go, is this life or death? Is this life or death that somebody cut me off on the road? It's just life or death that that glass broke and I've got to sweep it up. It's not life or death. Stop taking deep breath. Is this really a crisis? Because that's what we want to retrain ourselves. Is that, is this really life or death? Is, does, does my whole body need to shut down except for my heart and my muscles? So I can, am I, am I actually being eaten by a tiger right now? No, you're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I need to teach myself that too, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think that we, we push the, we push the panic button more often than is absolutely necessary. I mean, like you said, unless you are actually in a life threatening situation, mm -hmm. why panic? And there are people in my life who push the button and who do they call? They call me and I'm like, um, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> well, you're probably their calmness too. Uh, you, yeah. You know, you that happens to me a lot too, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a retraining and 
magnesium is good for that. Um, you know, good food. So I, I, with AI, I, I don't know. The, the old things used to work really well. And they're not working like they used to. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And then I love Joe Dispenza. And I love some of these people where, where you, you go off on a week or two weeks and you're, you're on a cruise or you're in some area and you're meditating. And then they have amazing results. But you got to come home to this again. You do. You have to come home to it again. So that's where things like, you know, stopping for a moment, taking a, be a deep breath, remembering that you're okay. Yes. You're alive and in your body and yes. you're okay. And that this circumstance or situation is not as big as we make it. Uh, I don't know how the people in your area are handling what they're going through and what I'm seeing from various sources on what is and what isn't being done in mm -hmm. order to be able to help these people. And so uh, I, if I were you, if I were with you over there, I'd be going around <laughs> with my ship to like wait, wanting everybody. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I probably need to do more of that. Um, I am, I am, do plan on going up to Asheville here shortly and bring my table and offer my services and bring some shifts. So and awesome. then my manufacturer has invented a, a purification system. Oh yeah. That, uh, puts out a fog of thyme oil and thyme oil is anti-mold, antibacterial, antiviral, actually kills the COVID virus. He, he, um, created it during COVID. And so he's bringing 10 of those up to Asheville to help people there uh, this weekend. So I'll be up there this weekend. And you're talking time, T-H-Y-M-E. Correct, yes. For people it's, now. Mm -hmm. It's not toxic um, and it's it's amazing. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, and, and my understanding of Asheville, the people, and, and it's not, of course it's Asheville, but the surrounding communities too. You know, we lost a lot of communities. And uh, people are coming together. People are coming from all over the United States, Texas. Uh, uh, DeSantis from Florida, the governor there, set portable bridges to bring back the roads. Wow. Uh, people are coming from all over. And and also the people are, are gathering together and helping each other, which is what we've seen here in Spartanburg as well. So disaster also tends to bring out love, you know, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, I think, really want to help each other. Yeah. I mean, no matter what our political differences is, whatever is going on in the world, the ultimate goal, I think, most humans are good. And yeah. we want to help. But it's hard to help when you're exhausted and sick. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And no matter what, I mean, for anybody who's listening to this, uh, I mean, maybe your situation is not anywhere near what they're experiencing in Asheville and in Spartansburg and all the areas around the Carolinas or even the areas in Florida that have been affected by those other two hurricanes that slammed into them. Um, you know, whatever you can do to make somebody else's life better, it ultimately makes your life better because we're all connected. We are right. all connected. So right. that's why I love I love what you're doing. I love what you're saying. I love that you're speaking life into circumstances and situations and providing ways that we can live a better life um, and be, be healthier. Um, mm -hmm. Kindness is huge. And we're going to talk about kindness when we come back. But kindness is huge. Um, I believe that what the world needs right now is <laughs> gratitude for what you have. And what you've been, you know, what you have, because what you have, if you're grateful for what you have, it's like telling God, thank you very much. I'll have more of that. Right. Yes. 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 And, yes. Then, and then hope. Who doesn't need hope in this day and age? Like you said, we have so many things going on between circumstances, situations, um, nanotechnology, um, <laughs> You know, um, I know it goes on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The list is endless. So yes. hang on to hope that it can be different, and then and then share who you are and your kind heart with other people. And we'll talk about that when we come back. But right now, we need to take our second break. I can't believe this hour is flying by. I know. <laughs> we'll be right back. Right Do you have an uplifting personal story to share? The Daily Gift Book series began with a daily gift of gratitude and a daily gift of hope, both available on Amazon. We're looking for people like you to share a story in our continuing series. 
kindness, peace, inspiration, and generosity are just a few of the upcoming topics in the Daily Gift Book series. Your stories matter, and they make a difference. Visit www.dailygiftbookseries.com to find out more on how to submit your story for one of the upcoming titles. With the hustle and bustle of today's world, how often do you practice gratitude? How can you make it a habit? Gratitude is more than putting a smile on your face and being thankful for the roof over your head. It's expanding your perception and finding gratitude for every opportunity and every challenge. Gratitude is a feeling of connection to things higher than yourself, to God, and to others. We focus on light, positivity, and connections. When we join our grateful hearts together, the power of community attracts more people and even more to be grateful for while making a difference. A grateful heart is infectious. Share it. Join our Grateful Hearts community on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash the Grateful Hearts community and watch your blessings blossom. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. And we're back. And I just want to take a minute to talk about the Daily Gift Book series, which you can find out more about on dailygiftbookseries.com. The first one, a daily gift of gratitude. Gratitude is something that if you say thank you, it's like saying, you know, I, I read somewhere and one of my favorite quotes is from a guy named Meister Eckhart, who was a 13th century theologian. And he said, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, it will be enough. So gratitude goes a long way. Hope is something that we all need, especially in these times that we're in right now. The world is a crazy place to live. Sometimes my house is a crazy place to live, but we all go through that, right? So who doesn't need a little bit of hope? These books contain stories from lots of authors putting their heads together, their stories together to bring you something that you can just read once a day. The next one coming out is going to be A Daily Gift of Kindness. We are releasing that on World Kindness Day, which will be on November the 13th. And Dr. Kate is going to join us. She's one of the authors in that book. And then coming after that, you can find out how you can be part of the next one at dailygiftbookseries.com. The next one is a daily gift of peace. So when I got this assignment, I'm going to call it because God kept tapping me on the shoulder gifts, you know, about all the different gifts and using the gifts and talents we have, which is exactly what we're talking about here today. Dr. Kate has the talents and the gifts to be able to help people get healthy. I help people get their stories told in books. And so I think that gratitude, be thankful first. From that place, you have a space in your heart for hope and kindness comes through that. And then ultimately, we're, we, we pray, I pray daily that all of these things together being used to make a difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of people who are around you will bring peace in some form or another, and hopefully to those around us and those in the world. And I can't wait until we have another day where there is no war happening on this planet. So, yeah. and with that, I want to say thank you, Dr. Kate, for saying you'll be part of Daily Gift of Kindness. I can't wait for your story. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it. And you are uh, kind of suits who you are and what you do. Yes, I guess it does, doesn't it? It does. It does. And you bring hope to people. Yes. People as far as their health is concerned, as far as their um, their mental well-being all the way around. Yes. I My 35 years in practice... I discovered it was so much easier to find what was going right in a person and then finding imbalances instead of diagnosing a disease, right? Mm -hmm. so, you, so in holistic medicine, you know, we go for the cause, like what's causing this. So this is what happened. This is the cause of it. And then this is what you, you have going on. This is what's great. What's going on with your body. Hope. That's hope. And then here's what we can do to bring your body back into a state of balance so that, that your body can heal itself. Yeah. And that people would walk out like, I feel better already. Yeah. yeah awesome. Exactly. And that's what you want because our words are healing. Mm -hmm. Words Absolutely. are healing. And uh, we'll, as you know, your books are yeah. healing as well. But, I mean, so yeah, I, lo I love to give hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
and I could, I could go on and on about nanotechnology, but I also don't like scaring people and I don't like to be doom and gloom, but also there is a truth to be told. But also I, I remember telling my son, I'm a very young age, spend five minutes on the problem and the rest of your life on the solution. Yeah. And of course I, I, I can't say that I've done that hundred percent all these years, but when I found out about the electromagnetic field and the nanotechnology and the other things and how can we raise the field, then my goal was, all right, so what's the solution? And, and, uh, and yeah, that's, so that's what the shift is about. And yeah. it's your books, giving hope and being mm -hmm. grateful and kindness, <laughs> acts of kindness. We yeah. have to remember acts of kindness. Yeah, especially when there is so much divisiveness in the world. You know, mm -hmm. the person who's standing in front of you online yeah. is, you know, or or uh, here's the thing. I don't know about you, but when I go to the grocery store, sometimes the, the cashiers are like in the worst mood. Like, what could be so bad about being in front of people all day, right? Like, what could be so right. bad? And there, I, I remember one day this girl, she was just like, she was in her own little world. I have no idea what was going on in front inside of her head, but she was mad as hell. She was mad. And I yeah. said to her, I walked up to her and she had this beautiful pair of glasses. And I said, Hey, I really like those glasses. Where did yeah. you get her whole mood? Yeah. Her whole mood. Yes. And, just by saying something, being saying something kind will bring kindness into someone's heart. Even if they don't feel it at the moment, it's going right. to cause them to, your word, shift. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. You know, yes. so be kind to one another. Be kind yes. to one another because um, we all come from the same place and, you know, we have it in us and we just have to use that. Yeah. But also, you know, when you don't feel good. Yeah. And you have no energy and you're doing everything you can to get to work, to get your paycheck, to feed your kids, to feed your children, to pay the rent, to pay the house payment. To, oh, now I've got health insurance. Oh, now I've got this. Uh, it's very difficult to do acts of kindness, to become, to be, to, to, to be nice and to, and to have hope when your energy is so low, when you don't feel good. I know as I've been there, I know how, what it feels like to not feel good. And it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely does it serve us to help? Yeah. Us? So, the, uh, so my hope is that these these stories in these books and the, and the kindness, particularly. I mean, I remember a time when my my son was very young, and I I had no money, no credit card, no nothing because I forgot my wallet at home when I was on my appointment. And yeah, um, after I begged the the uh, the cashier to let me get somebody to um, give a credit card, and they said no, I was I was stuck. Right. And somebody graciously handed me money and said, uh, in your car and go get your son. Had overheard the conversation and um and just great I, I was just so grateful to get that. And and I said, How can I get it back to you? And they said, just pay it forward. And yeah, why if God doesn't put circumstances and situations in front of you that you do that? Yes. You yes. Do. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all good. So tell me, where can people go? Uh, I know you have a website. Where can people go to learn more about the shift and the work that you're doing? Um, I have a website. It's uh, theshiftdevice.com. Okay. And awesome. um, just so everybody is aware, I am uh, creating a new website, so it's really going to be much nicer. But I have... I have a resource page where you can read um, various articles and s look at videos mm -hmm. and, and um, just some information on how to use it. I've got a, um, I just downloaded not, uh, recently, I have a, a videographer that has um, created a song and a, and a beautiful little, I guess what, Diddy or whatever. It's a little YouTube video. Um, and I, you can, I think that is on YouTube, but it's also on my website. It's really, okay. really cool. It's, awesome. it's a nice little song too. Yeah. Awesome. And, awesome. Uh, yeah. So the shift device.com. Uh, lovely. I can't wait for people to get their own shift device. In the meanwhile, um, you know, I see, I'm just curious, these, these, yeah charts that you have behind you the colors are like screaming at me so yes. can you just give me the a, a little bit of a quick synopsis of what they are measuring what you're showing there 
Yes, um, I have practiced for 35 years a system called holographic health. And that was created by Dr. Theodore Baruti. Um, he's no longer with us, but he spent his whole life developing the system. I was very fortunate to meet him early on. I was his first student and Dr. Ted and I were very close and very dear friends for 30 some years. Wow. Um, it is biblically driven um, and it is a way to help others heal themselves by finding emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental imbalances. So in our traditional medical field, um, we talk about mental imbalances, but we call it a mental illness. And then we prescribe drugs or, and then we only treat the physical, but there's the spiritual aspect. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it brings in, as do with many traditional holistic styles of healing, so the physical, emotional, spiritual, chemical. And when you look, bring all those four in together and get them all in a state of balance, it's absolutely remarkable how fast the body heals. Wow. Um, so I'm not quite sure what we would call having the electromagnetic field and, and our AI situation that we're in and, and, and AI is not going to go anywhere. So we just have to develop technology that will help us thrive, mm -hmm. thrive mm -hmm. with AI. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that what I have discovered using my holographic health system is, um, the lower the magnetic electromagnetic field. And of course, AI and the 5g and all of that actually causes all four areas the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual to weaken, which would kind of make sense, really. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yes, it did. And it opens up a door for a million other questions that we just I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if we were neighbors, we'd be we'd be hanging out a lot. Yeah, we would. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just love the work that you're doing. I love that you are um I don't, I don't necessarily like the word alternative healing, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's the best way for people to understand the kind of work that you do, because most people um, today um, with all of the pharmaceutical commercials being thrown at them and, you know, you feel this way, take this, you know, and it's as bad as part of my problem. Part of my problem is my yeah. grandmother and my aunt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, I, you, you know, I'm crying about something. Here, eat this. You'll feel better. I know. I know. You know, and that was they everybody had their own way of doing things. And, and and today the pharmaceutical industry is having their way with people today. You know, you feel this. Take this. You do da, da, take this. You know, and people are yeah. um, inundated with things that are never getting to, as you said earlier, the root cause. Right. Yeah, that's been going on since the early 1900s when the Flexner Report was put out uh, by the up and, and uh, coming pharmaceutical industry. So it's been going on a very long time. I think it, we're probably at, its, at the worst right now. Yeah, yeah. In I, I'm in agreement, and now they're they're like doing everything they can to um, mm, well, that's a whole other conversation. But <laughs> we're getting stronger, we're getting stronger, we're getting stronger. The beautiful thing about AI is that we're we all are can find information now. We didn't have information before. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, and nothing can be hidden. <laughs> Yeah, nothing can be hidden that won't be disclosed, right? That's biblical. We know that fact. Yeah. So yeah, this is um this has been an incredibly good conversation. I thank you so much oh, for thank you very joining much. me on conversations that make a difference. And my hope is that this conversation is going to make a difference in in the lives of other people who are listening and who can share this because it will um it's always available on YouTube. Um, and on conversations at makeadifference.com, it will go there as well um, so that you can um, watch the replay and share it with other people. Once again, your website, Dr. Kate? Oh, the, the shiftdevice.com. Okay, great. Thank you for joining me. And for those of you who are listening, 
make sure that every conversation that you have with other people is somehow, some way, making a difference in their lives. And we'll see you the next time. Thank you so much. Tune in next time for Conversations That Make a Difference with host Teresa Bellardi every Tuesday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern with live call-in shows every first and third Tuesday on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. Thank you for listening, and thank you to our station owner, Deborah Beauvais, working behind the scenes. Be sure to go to conversationsthatmakeadifference.com for your free gift. Make sure your conversations make a difference.